This is a bot playing WoW Arena. The only thing this person is doing is moving around and a program is doing the rest. Whether you know it or not, you probably encountered hundreds of bots in Arena just like this. Bots do not really think for themselves, but instead follow a really complicated set of rules of how to do damage, when to interrupt, and even when to use a defensive. Ironically, this can make bots a bit tricky to kill since they will always press a defensive at a critical moment. Of course, botting is cheating. It hurts the game, and you should never do it even if you think you won't get caught. But today, add-ons are so complex that botting is even more pointless. With instant access to vital information, most players these days can program themselves to play just like a machine. In fact, some add-ons like weak auras are so strong that some people think they should outright be banned. But today, we will show you how, with the power of weak auras, you can play as good, if not better, than any bot you will ever encounter. Before we start, be sure to check out SkillCap.com. Everything at SkillCap is backed by a rating game guarantee. Yes, we literally promise that you will go up in rating while using our guides, and if you don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the link below to get started, but for now, let's get back to the video. First off, we'll cover the most noteworthy offensives and how to counter them just as efficiently as a bot would. Having our weak aura pack to track and alert you to these abilities will allow you to assess the situation and take action immediately, preventing countless deaths for you and your partners. We recommend joining our Discord server and heading to the PvP add-ons section to grab our weak aura pack. Anyway, to kick things off, let's go over Death Knights and their recently reworked Unholy Assault cooldown, which now buffs their damage by 20% for 20 seconds, rather than the previous haste buff it applied before. This rework has made Unholy Assault a Death Knight's biggest offensive cooldown, meaning that when you see this alert pop up, you need to use your defensives as soon as possible to try and avoid the incoming burst. However, as mentioned earlier, Unholy Assault has a lengthy 20 second duration, so a single defensive won't last the full duration of the buff, meaning that you should look to crowd control the Death Knight on this tool as well to avoid them reaping all of its benefits. It's also worth mentioning that Unholy Death Knights can deal a huge amount of their damage from range with Death Coil, Clawing Shadows, and their dots, so trying to kite and hold on to your defensives won't work out too well unless you can escape to the pillar and line of sight their abilities. Next up are Demon Hunters, who have three important abilities to track. The first being Fell Barrage, which without a weak aura can only be seen as a buff on the Demon Hunter themselves. Fell Barrage is one of the biggest offensives in a Demon Hunter's kit, dealing AoE damage within 12 yards of the Demon Hunter over 8 seconds until they run out of fury. There are three ways to effectively deal with this cooldown. First, you can look to crowd control the Demon Hunter. This is because Fell Barrage will only continue to do damage as long as the Demon Hunter has Fury, and by CCing them, you deny them from using any of their generators, thus making the ability end earlier. If you don't have any crowd control available though, a defensive is probably necessary as the amount of damage this cooldown can do is pretty insane. You can also attempt to line of sight or outrange the Demon Hunter, as this will deny them generating fury and making the barrage not able to reach you. However, shaking a Demon Hunter off can be pretty tricky. The second high priority offensive from Demon Hunters is Essence Break, with its 45 second cooldown and damage amplification on Blade Dance and Chaos Strike. This is the ability that helps produce all those one shots you see on Twitch, so being able to track it is imperative to winning when facing a Havoc player. Essence Break, although deadly, is only 4 seconds long in duration and is on the global cooldown, meaning that if you were a bot, you would just instantly crowd control the DH as soon as it's pressed, denying them any usage of the ability at all. However, this isn't always possible, so the second best option is to just use damage mitigation as soon as you see Essence Break and move away from any teammate you were stacking next to, to avoid being cleaved down together. Even if you miss the first tick of damage from the follow-up blade dance, using a defensive will still be a good call as it hits multiple times, especially if they have a chaos disposition proc. The last cooldown we track from Demon Hunters is the Hunt, which thanks to the tier set this season is off cooldown far more frequently than before, making tracking it very difficult. Due to this, it's vital that you know when it is coming so you can act accordingly be it through stealthing the initial hit with a Shadow Meld, Greater Invisibility, or Vanish, which will cause you to immune that big chunk of damage as the Demon Hunter arrives to you, or by not stacking on your partners to avoid getting that huge, nasty, undispellable damage over time effect on your entire team, to even crowd controlling the Demon Hunter on the cast so it doesn't go off. Even a Root will delay them and make them waste their time. The only thing we wouldn't recommend is using a big defensive on this, as it doesn't do as much damage as before, and having your damage reduction for Fell Barrage and Essence Break will be far more beneficial. Next up are Druids, who we are of course tracking Incarnation for both DPS specs. This is incredibly important, as Incarnation is where Boomkins and Ferals generate most of their pressure, 
So being alerted to this and crowd controlling them to deny any of their abilities or trading out your defensives will always be a good choice. We also track Feral Frenzy from Ferals, which you can consider removing with a Dwarf Racial, Blessing of Protection, Mending Bandage, or Cauterizing Flames if necessary. This is the biggest damage over time effect in a Feral's kit, so knowing when this is applied and being able to react instantly will shut down a ton of their pressure. Moving on, we have Evokers, which with the amount of devastations that are appearing on the ladder will be a lifesaver. First, we have the biggest damage cooldown of devastation, Dragon Rage. This ability is absolutely nuts, causing the Evoker to deal more damage with their spells and allowing them to disintegrate far more often. When you see this ability, you want to run as far away as possible, as Devastation Evokers have a very limited range on their abilities and can be kited out pretty well. However, if this isn't possible, then you're going to need to try to crowd control and kick them on any Disintegrates, Fire Breaths, or Eternity Surges you see. Finally, if you're unable to do this, be sure to trade out a defensive or you run the risk of dying through healing as their burst is just that high. The second ability we track from Devastation Evokers is Tip the Scales. This is quite often used on Fire Breath, as it will cause it to be cast instantly at its max rank, allowing them to purge the maximum number of buffs, as well as hit the hardest it can. Due to this being an instant buff that is quickly consumed, it can be hard to react to the follow-up ability. However, as mentioned earlier, dragons have terrible range, so using a movement ability to regroup and recover afterwards can work out in your favor. Alternatively, you can try to crowd control them and purge the buff off, but this will require some really fast reactions and a load of luck on your side, as they'll typically consume the buff instantly. Next up are the Hunter's Specs, which each have their own massive damage cooldown, the first being Coordinated Assault for Survival. Due to Survival's long range on their bombs and increased range when using Aspect of the Eagle, it's unlikely you'll be able to kite out the damage of this cooldown. Therefore, your best course of action is to hit them with a hard crowd control such as a stun, disorient, or incapacitate, which will allow you to escape to the pillar and line of sight the rest of the CD if needed. Alternatively, you can trade out a wall and try to brute force your way through. However, do this with caution as this CD can lead to a quick death if the hunter is able to land CC and maintain uptime. Beast Mastery, on the other hand, has two large offensive cooldowns, the first being Call of the Wild, which summons several pets for 20 seconds, as well as having Bestial Wrath, buffing both the main pets and players' damage. The best way to deal with these cooldowns will always be to try and use the map to your advantage if it has two platforms, as you can simply jump from up top to below and cause all the pets to slowly waddle down as they try to connect back to you. However, if that's not possible, you should look to use Roots on the main pet when they are in Bestial Wrath to prevent it from dealing damage. Or in the case they use Call of the Wild and Bestial Wrath together, don't be afraid to use your biggest defensives available as this is the maximum damage a BM Hunter can dish out at any one time, especially if they've also trapped your healer. Finally, we have Marksmanship Hunter with their age-old True Shot buff, which allows them to cast aimed shots faster, have reduced cooldown on their main two damage abilities, and even give them critical strike chance and damage if specced into it. When you see this alert, you know the hunter wants to dish out a ton of uninterruptible casts, so you should try to get to a pillar if you want to hold on to your cooldowns. However, if you have the tools available to you, like disarms, stuns, or any other instant CC, make sure to use it on the hunter as soon as possible to deny their casts. Now it's time for the Frost and Arcane Mages, whose casts can annihilate you if you're not careful. For Frost Mage, we have Ray of Frost, which will deal strong ticking damage that ramps up over its short duration. However, if you are unable to land the kick before they shimmer into Narnia behind three walls and a wardrobe, you better get used to using your stealths or shadow meld, as this too will interrupt the cast instantly. And if you don't have access to either of these, well, then you best get to moving, as you can actually outrange the cast if you can travel far enough and stop its channel. However, this is only really viable if you're super far away from the mage and have a teleport, leap, or roll available, as you're going to be snared by 70%. The second huge cast for mages is for Arcane with their Arcane Surge ability, which increases all of their damage by 35%, as well as hitting quite hard on its own. This ability has a pretty long cast time compared to other mage spells, thus we've included not only when the buff is active, but when the mage begins casting. This gives you ample time to kick, line of sight, stealth, or CC the mage to waste their time. If they do manage to land this highly dangerous cast though, they're still going to have to cast on Arcane to deal damage, so landing kicks on them afterwards is vital for your survival. And if that's not possible, just try not to stack on your teammates, as they can deal huge damage with instants, which is increased by the amount of targets they can hit with their arcane orbs and barrages. Moving on, we have the recently reworked Rogues Kit, which each have a bunch of different modifiers. The most important is Deathmark for Assassination, which you must pair with your Dwarf Racial, Bleed Dispel, or Damage Reduction, as it's simply that powerful. 
There's also Shadow Blades for Subtlety, which will now fill their combo points completely when they use a generator, essentially allowing them to back-to-back -back eviscerate over and over, meaning it's definitely worth crowd controlling them when you see this being popped. And who could forget Subtlety's secret technique ability, which you must press the defensive as soon as you see, or you risk heading to an early grave. Speaking of being one-shot, Elemental Shaman's Primordial Wave has been buffed this patch, making this ability even more worth tracking than before. Primordial Wave will release Lava Bursts on everyone with a Flame Shock active, as well as giving them haste and an Elemental Blast on their target. Needless to say, tracking this is a must as it's Elemental Shaman's biggest CD and will alert you to when you're about to take a lot of damage. When you see the alert, it's a great idea to try and line the Shaman to reduce the amount of Lava Bursts coming out as it only works on targets in line of sight. And if you're a healer, try to dispel Flame Shock when you see Primordial Wave to minimize the amount of damage the Shaman is about to deal and haste they receive. In fact, one of the best ways to annoy an Elemental Shaman is to immediately dispel Flame Shock on their target as soon as you see Primordial Wave used. Next up, we have the Demonology Warlock's Tyrant, which we alert you to twice. Once when it is being casted, and again through the duration of the ability while it's active. When you see this ability being casted, make sure you kick it as they often have a small window to cast their Tyrant to maximize how many pets it will buff. By kicking it, you just might ruin their whole game plan. However, if you're unable to kick it and see the Tyrant alert is active, make sure you root the Dreadstalkers and Vile Fiend as the Tyrant will be empowering their damage by 15% each. Don't worry too much about the Tyrant's bolts itself though as it's been nerfed so that this is no longer a priority, but if you can avoid it with a simple line of sight, there's no reason not to. Next, Destruction Warlocks also have a powerful ability to track with their Dimensional Rifts, which our weak aura will refresh with each use so you know how long they're up for. This is Destruction's biggest damage outside of Chaos Bolt, so if you see three of them in quick succession, it's definitely worth using a defensive or trying to line of sight until the alert has gone, meaning the portal has despawned and it's safe to walk out. When it comes to warriors, we've highlighted a few spells, but most importantly is their thunderous roar, which puts a powerful bleed effect on enemies around them. When you see this go off, make sure to dispel the bleed with dwarf racial if it's on you, or dispel it from your ally if you're a dragon or survival hunter, as this is one of the deadliest tools in a warrior's kit. And finally, we've got all those other standard damage amplifying cooldowns like a Windwalker's Serenity, Ret Paladin's Wings, Warrior's Warbreaker, and more. Without an alert, you may not react fast enough to prevent overuse of cooldowns or death. With offensives covered, now let's cover some of the defensives that we've implemented into the weak aura. Rather than tracking walls and damage mitigation, which you should be tracking with Omnibar and or a nameplate add-on, we're going to be tracking abilities that shut down and prevent your crowd control so that you can avoid wasting globals, immuning your CC, or have your setups destroyed by the enemy trying to outplay you. This also prevents an overload of information from having every defensive in the game tracked and grouped with the offensives in the weak aura pack. First up, we have Nullifying Shroud for Evokers, which gives the Evoker three charges to immune incoming CC for the next 30 seconds. If you're unaware the Evoker has this ability up, you're potentially going to be wasting potent crowd controls into it being immune. However, with our weak aura, you're going to know exactly when it's active. With this knowledge, you can either purge it off to remove the stacks and land CC, Use spammable crowd control into it so the stacks fall off, allowing you or your team to commit stronger CC onto the evoker afterwards, or simply wait out the stacks until they fall off before attempting a setup. Next up, we've got Phase Shift from all Priest specs, which allows them to immune all damage and CC for one second when used. This ability is highly powerful, as if you're not aware of when it's been used, you may send your instant crowd control into the immunity, or even consume high value damage procs into it as you try and mash that swifty one shot macro. However, with our alert, you can acknowledge its presence and delay your global for when it ends, causing you to not waste any of your kit or resources. Finally, we have Amplify Curse, which although does not prevent your crowd control, will most likely be used on Curse of Weakness and prevent you or your teammates from critting for 20 seconds at a time. Being alerted to this is crucial as many <coughs> DPS players with curse dispels tend to not be aware of this mechanic through the regular frames, reducing their team's pressure by a ton as their cooldowns get denied. However, with the alert, it's possible to see it in the blink of an eye, alerting you to dispel the next curse that is used by the Warlock. Lastly, we have the pets, totems, and guardians that we alert you to, which if not dealt with fast can cause you to lose all your momentum. One of the most deadly pets we track is Scyfiend, which if not killed fast can cause you to lose games as it puts a large healing reduction on whoever it's targeting. It can be hard to know when Scyfiend is out with all these void tendrils shadow priests are spawning these days, so having this alert will let you know exactly when to target into that big mosh pit of nameplates to try to take out this powerful pet. 
And if you can't kill it quickly and it's targeting you, then at least knowing it's active will allow you to line of sight it, snapping its channel and forcing the mortal strike effect to eventually drop. We then have a Warlock's Observer which, if not killed, will deal 5% damage to everyone that's casting within 30 yards of it for 20 seconds. This can actually be pretty hard to see without a weak aura, especially if you're as zoomed in as some popular streamers. There's also a Demonology Warlock's Fell Obelisk which will buff the Warlock and their pet's haste by 10% while active. Both the Observer and Fell Obelisk have extremely low health, so being alerted when they are present can help you kill them very quickly. Next up, we have the ultimate setup busting guardian in the game, War Banner, which reduces all crowd control effects by 50% for 15 seconds. This guardian, if not properly noticed, could be hiding behind a wall, leading to it flying under the radar and potentially ruining your game winning push. But with a handy weak aura, you're going to know exactly when it's placed and be able to quickly focus on the warrior's positioning and burn down the banner they have placed. Finally, we have the masters of totems themselves, shamans with their grounding, counter strike and healing tide totem. If you aren't aware grounding is up, you're going to be wasting potential crowd control and damage for the next 3 seconds. If you aren't aware of Counter Strike, which even happens to pro players since no one really plays this talent, you may end up dealing significant damage to yourself with your burst. And if you don't see that healing tide in the back, you're going to be trying to kill through a brick wall of healing. All of these totems can and should be easily killed, and with a weak aura eager to blast a foghorn in your ear with a handy icon to accompany it, killing all these pets is going to be a breeze. As a reminder, the weak aura pack is available on our Discord server, so be sure to grab it from the PvP add-ons channel and start to see yourself rise in the rankings as you too learn how to play as efficiently as a bot. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries where Rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill cap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. So if you are serious about improving and want to start seeing immediate results, sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month. Alright guys, that does it for this one. Let us know in the comments below if this video was useful and if there are any other add-on videos you'd like to see. As always, we want to thank you all for watching and we'll see you soon.